Hey, welcome back to Travel Bubble, another day in Mexico, and today we're going to a place that I can't pronounce. And I can't either. It's Tio Tihuacan. <laughs> we'll put it here. It's basically an hour north of the city. We are going to try and do it cheaply by getting the metro up to the north bus station terminal and then getting a bus there, a public bus. It should cost us about £5, including entry, we think, compared to the £25, £35 that we've been quoted on tours. So fingers crossed. We'll get there and we can show you what it's like. Let's go. So we just got our tickets for the Metro. It's five pesos, which is about 20 pence. Uh, you get them for solo journeys. So we've got one for the way there and one for the way back each. It's super simple. So we've made it to the autobuses del Nord. It's on the yellow route. And now we've got to go to gate eight, apparently, where we'll hopefully find a bus to be able to take us to the ruins. So we've made it onto the bus. We've got a round trip ticket. It's 52 pesos per way. So we paid 104 each. And the bus takes about an hour, I think. It's quite hot. Hopefully they'll have some air conditioning and we'll get to the ruins in a bit. So we've made it to the ruins. Teotihuacan, probably not how you say it still, one of the massive pyramids behind us. It was really easy to get there on the bus, dropped us off at gate three. It's nice and early in the morning, some of the vendors are still setting up, so hopefully it's before the big crowds. It was, how much is it to get in? Uh, to get in it was 75 pesos, which was, I think it's about a fiver, something yeah. like that. Not too bad anyway. Um, there were some people offering for guided tours and stuff, but we're not going to do that. We're going to walk around at our own pace and let's get up that big pyramid. So I think this is the Temple of the Moon. This is the first temple that you come to as you come through um, Zone 3 off the bus. Behind Adam, right over there, we think is the Temple of the Sun. We haven't got a guide, so we have no idea if we are getting right, but they're pretty spectacular all the same. So we've made it up to the top of the Pyramid of the Moon. This one was a bit of an easier climb than it looks like the Pyramid of the Sun is going to be. You're only able to get halfway up it. Apparently at the very top of this would have been a temple that had three rooms to it. The rest of the structure is all just solid, believe it or not. Um, so we're going to chill up here, admire the view a little bit, and then we're going to try and attempt to go up that big one over there. You might hear people clapping in the background. Apparently, at the base of the pyramids, if you start clapping, it will echo with the sound of a bird. So we've climbed up one of the smaller pyramid bases. Behind us here is what would have been the main plaza. And the pyramid that I'm standing on, much like all these other ones, are symmetrically opposite each other. They would have been used for uh, the sacrifices to the gods. Most people think that this was an Aztec ruin, an Aztec site when they found it but actually it was a Tio Tikhuacan. I still don't know how to say it. Um, <laughs> but apparently they come a little bit after the Aztecs, I think. And they would have come here. Uh, the plaza would have been full of colour, full of different sculptures for their rituals, for their sacrifices to the gods, as they made their way down the avenue of the dead. So a lot of these pyramids still have grass growing up the side of them. That is how they would have discovered them. They would have seen them as little mountains in the past. In fact, one of the world's largest pyramids is still under grass and looks like a giant mountain in the town of Puebla. So we're walking down the Avenue of the Dead and we found a mural that was discovered in the 1960s when they did a bit of excavation then. It's of a puma um, and it's got green circles underneath which are meant to be like precious jewels. So this whole avenue is covered with painting. That is the only one that remains so far that we've seen. So all the way along the avenue and in front of the pyramids, there are these signs with information about the conservation, about how it came to be. Um, so you don't really need to pay for a guide if you want to be able to take your time and see all of these amazing things. And you can do, and you can learn some stuff along the way with the helpful information that's presented in front of you. We made it down the avenue to the Pyramid of the Sun. 
Um, I think this is where the tour groups come in. It's much more of a tourist area. You've got the people selling everything. Um, so we kind of try and dip in and out of those people and get all the way to the top. It's huge. We're just learning a little bit from the provided information before we go up the pyramid of the sun. And it is really old. So it's from 100 to 650 AD. It's the largest pre-Hispanic building of its time. We made it to the top of the Sun Pyramid. It's very steep and there's a lot of people, but it is all worth it. Just check out the view behind us. So another top tip for if you're going independent to the ruins, and um, you can just come out of gate two and there's loads of restaurants. There's some loads of guys that are like happy to try and get the business. Uh, we went to one of the guys that was calm and collected and we've got some lovely food here for less than two pounds. Just past the Temple of the Moon, there are some other rooms you can explore. You can walk around what we're currently stood in, which would have been one of the houses. Uh, they had walls and rooms for various different purposes and were very advanced for their time, having drainage systems, and ways to collect and distribute water. And you can also go into a bit that leads you kind of underground, um, which is one of the palaces. And you can see some of the original murals on the walls as well. So that's it from us here at the ruins. Still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, if you are coming here, it is very exposed. So it's been a quite hot day, so definitely bring um, some water. There are plenty of vendors selling it, if not, but you can make it a much cheaper experience if you prepare a little bit in advance. Uh, we're gonna get the bus back to the city now. If you like this video, we've got more coming up from in and around Mexico. So do like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.